Hey guys, welcome to a Web Design Tuts Plus uh, tutorial. I'm Adi, and today we'll uh, begin working on a coming soon page. And we'll do that with uh, the, the countdown timer that I made for a quick tip a few days ago. And this right here is the final result. Uh, we'll do a bit of PSD uh, and then HTML, CSS, and we'll also power this timer with some JavaScript. So let's get started in Photoshop where I have a blank document and I'll start by importing a logo. This is my dummy logo that I use in my projects. Okay. I'll move it up here. And I'll push it down 32 pixels. Now I I already know that on the coding stage I'll be using M's to represent different values for margins, paddings, and so on. So uh, right now I'm using 32 pixels as an equivalent to two M's, and we'll do that um, with the rest of the layout as well. So let's close this. And we'll continue by making the timer area. And for that, grab the rectangle tool, draw a quick rectangle, something like this. Okay. Position it 2Ms or 32 pixels from the logo. And let's give it a nice uh, dark color like 1F2225. All right, next up, let's add a pattern. And I'll be using uh, a pattern that I got from uh, Premium Pixels. It's called Pixel Pattern 14. And it just creates this nice uh, wavy kind of uh, vertical pattern. Okay, next up, let's bring in our timer. Align it. And let's clean up the, the layers a little bit. So I'll make a top group which holds the logo and I will make a timer area group which will hold the actual timer. All right, let's add a text here. Okay, fill this with white the font family will be Georgia and let's make this about 36 pixels in height in uh, size sorry <laughs> align it with the center and do the same push it down uh, this time about 4 M's which is equivalent to 64 pixels Okay, something like that. Let's bring down the timer area as well, 64 pixels. And let's extend the base to 64 pixels. Something like this. It doesn't have to be 100% accurate since uh, we'll do all the precise measurements in CSS. Okay, next up, let's create a new group and call it sign up. We'll start with a text, we'll say sign up and we'll notify you of our launch. C 
something like this. Okay, let's reduce the font size to about 24 pixels. And I'll change the line height to 36 pixels. Now, if you don't know the rule, um, the line height should be 1.5 times bigger than the font size. So in my case, 24 pixels plus half of that, 12, is 36. Okay, so let's align this. Let's push it down, 4 amps. And let's give it a color. We're not using black. Instead, we're using the color that we used for the background. So 1F, 2225. Okay, now it's time for our input. It's the place where uh, the user puts in its email address. So we'll begin with a round rectangle tool and we'll use a radius of five pixels and we'll make a button out of it. Now the button should be something like should be something like this about 50 pixels in height and 140 in width. Okay. We'll do some text notify me which is white uppercase uh, font will be Helvetica 14 pixels bold and I think we can go with 16 pixels okay something like that Let's apply a um, drop shadow, just a very basic one, one for distance, one for size, and we'll reduce the opacity. Let me just move this. We'll reduce the opacity to about 30% and click OK. Now we'll rename this to button base and Uh, this right here is the button color. Now we got to create uh, a gradient. So the easiest way to do that is to uh, to create a gradient overlay. But instead of using colors, we'll use a black to white. And then we'll just change the blend mode to screen. All right. So now we just reduce the opacity until we get to the value that we need. In my case, it's about 20%. And that way we create a nice gradient without actually changing the colors. Uh, so for instance, if I wanna make uh, the button red, I just change its color and the gradient is automatically applied. All right. Uh, Another thing, we need to add an inner shadow. So uncheck use global light, 90 degrees for the angle. Uh, distance will be one, size one, and I'll change the opacity to about 20%. Just a very subtle uh, shadow in there. Okay, that's our button. Now let's create uh, the outer box. Uh, and for that, we'll do a bit of math because we want our corners uh, to complement each other. I don't know if you saw it, there was a quick tip by Ian, Ian Yates, a couple of, uh, couple of days ago about making the perfect rounded corners. And I invite you to, to watch that tutorial. But long story short, if we have like two boxes like this, uh, the outer box's ra uh, radius 
uh, should be equal to the inner box radius plus the offset, the distance between the two. So in my case, uh, I'm using eight pixels for distance. So plus five pixels from the radius will give me 13 pixel radius for the outer um, for the outer box. So let me just do this. It's going to be white input. Let's rename this to base. By the way, a quick tip if you haven't uh, seen it already, if you're using Photoshop CS6, uh, you can uh, quickly rename multiple layers by tabbing like this. So if you're in edit mode and you're uh, changing the layer's name, you can just tab and it's going to cycle through all the layers and you can change their names accordingly. It's a pretty uh, neat feature. Okay, so let's uh, apply a quick stroke here. One pixel uh, outside and the color will be a very light gray, something like DC, DE, E, zero, something like that. Okay. Let's move the button. Zoom in. I'll just position it eight pixels from top and bottom here. All right. Let's increase this the size of the box as well. Okay. We'll do the same thing. We'll position this uh, about four M's from the text. Okay. Next, we have a disclaimer text below this. So we'll say we won't use your email for spam just to notify you of our launch. This is a purely arbitrary uh, text. And I'll use Helvetica, 14 pixels, and we gotta change the color a little bit. We'll make it a very light, uh, light gray, like 90, 90, and 91. Oops. Something like that. And also let's change the color of that little star. And increase the size a little bit. Center align it. And move it down 32 pixels. And that's it for our sign up uh, area. Now it's time to add the footer and we are done. So footer, uh, I'll make a quick rectangle. Okay, doke. Move it down about four amps. like that okay um, the background color will be F C F B F 3 light gray so F C F B F B sorry like that 
and I'll also add a stroke and the color should be something a bit darker than the background color so in my case e6 e5 e5 and also I'll add a small inner shadow change the degree to 90 change the angle actually to uh, to 90 degrees size should be about 4 and distance should be about 2 and you can play around with the opacity bring it down to about 20 percent and change the distance to 1 and you can also increase the size to about seven. This is really uh, up to you if you want to make the shadow more pronounced or just very subtle. And I'll also increase, uh, I'll also darken the stroke just to create a bit of contrast, something like that. Okay, uh, let's add some final text. It's gonna say, um, Follow us on Twitter or give us a big like on Facebook. And then you will just have the copyright stuff. Font size should be 14. It should have like two M's of top padding. Change the link color to 2A9CCC. Okay. And also change these. All right, and that's it really. We have our page now and in the next videos we'll begin by uh, slicing up the PSD we just need the logo uh, a piece of this background so we can repeat it and also we'll need uh, the timer uh, piece right here so we'll grab one of this and that's it we don't have a lot of images it's a very simple page so I'll see you in the next video for uh, all the coding part. And I think it's gonna be very interesting for you because we'll be using less uh, the dynamic stylesheet language to generate our stylesheets. So thanks for watching, I'll see you in the next video.